Well, three Brits who caught coronavirus in Italy say they've been stuck in an eternal hell after spending five weeks now in forced isolation in what they claim a grim quarantine facility. The trio were in Florence in Italy teaching English and they all tested positive, so Italian officials took them into a quarantine facility. And while the men say they are currently symptom-free, they have not been able to leave because they continue to test positive for the virus. Well, they're joining us now from Florence in their separate rooms. We have Will Castle, Quinn Pachesny and Rhys James. Well, very good morning to you all. We've got you in separate rooms right now. Will, what's the situation on, a, on an hourly, daily basis? Um, so... Today we are having our sixth test, um, so I mean, hopefully, fingers crossed that that will finally be negative. Um, but yeah, in terms of our hourly routine, we just kind of chill in here, essentially. Um, I mean, I do jobs and just kind of wait for the meals um, and sometimes work out, but that's literally it. Explain, explain to the viewers exactly what happened. You three went out to do a summer school and you became friends, I think, when you got to Italy. But what then happened? Yeah, so um, we were working on camps, essentially, summer camps that were aiming to teach English. Um, and then we had a week off work, um, uh, at the end of which the guys contracted symptoms. Um, and so we went and got tested because we wanted to make sure that we weren't going to be spreading it to anyone, and we all tested positive. So so, Reese, this was about five weeks ago. Um, what were your symptoms and, and what happened next? And what explanation have you been given for the fact you've got over COVID but you're still testing positive? Yeah, so basically, Quinn and myself both had the dry cough. We both had the fever. Um, and then it was mainly the loss of taste and smell, which made us think, yeah, we definitely got this. So whilst we were in Florence, we thought rather than going around, carrying on with life, we should go and get tested. And the only explanation we've been given is that we're not contagious anymore. But until it tests negative twice, we cannot leave. In, in the Italian government's eyes, we are still positive for the virus. And there's a guy next to you uh, on the balcony below you, Reese. I think, who's been there two and a half months. We've just, you, we've just lost the connection um, there, Reese. Just, just start, the country, start your answer again, Reese. We just we lost the connection. Cool, yeah. So this guy on the balcony below me was basically flying into Italy from abroad. Um, they pulled him aside for a random swab test, and for two and a half months, he has tested positive every single week. Well, Quinn, this is enormously frustrating because you effectively are imprisoned in quarantine in Italy until you test negative. You all know that you've got over COVID. You've been told you're no longer infectious and you cannot escape. I mean, what what is going to happen? Yeah, I mean, it's quite frustrating because there's no definitive like time scale or timeline that we've been given or can be given um, for when we can leave. Um, so it's the worry is that how long can this continue for? You know, as you just spoke about the guy below Reese. Um, he was here for nearly three months before he left. Um, and the thought of us being here for three months is petrifying. Yeah, to spend any longer in this prison and eternal hell, as we refer to it. I mean, yeah, compared I mean, I mean, to I mean... other people's situations, of course, it's not awful. I mean, you're safe yeah. and, you know, you're, you're somewhere that isn't prison. I know it effectively feels like you're in prison, yeah, but, but hang on, these, this... these guys are 22, 23, right? And yeah. you're stuck in these four walls. You've, you've got nothing to do all day. I've got two sons or well, three sons around your age. They would be going absolutely nuts. I mean, what is it, Quinn, what is it like for your mental health being locked in that situation yeah. for weeks on end? Mental health, like, is really, yeah, it's a problem being in here, like five weeks with sort of not being able to talk and have a proper conversation with people um, is, is really challenging. You know, I'm 20, the other guys are 22, 23. We're used to being in lots of social situations, out working at university. Um, so to be completely deprived of all of that 
yeah. is sort of really tasking on our on our mental health. Yeah. Well, and it is you're you're effectively still in lockdown, aren't you, Dr. Hillary? I just want to ask about this situation where they're not infectious, they no longer have COVID, and yet they're still testing positive. That has major ramifications for the rest of us when we think about our testing system. Absolutely. And, and if we're testing positive, are we actually positive for infectious COVID? Uh, the thinking is that we're not. Uh, in this country, if you have symptoms and you test positive, you self-isolate for 10 further days after your symptoms first started. And if you feel well, other than having a continuous cough, uh, the cough we know can continue when the COVID uh, uh, has disappeared from your body. But we know that you can still test positive because there are remnants of the RNA of the virus still in your body, which can lead to a false positive test, even though you're yeah. no longer infectious. <laughs> so clearly it's different in Italy uh, to the way it is here. And that could have implications. You have to look at Italy. They've got actually a very low rate per 100,000. I think mm -hmm. it's about, uh, it's under 20 per 100,000. Here it's about 70 per 100,000. So maybe they, they know something that we don't, but I think it's very unlikely. Well, let's bring, let's bring Will back in, um, finally. I mean, Will, uh, you said, it, just in the briefing, like, every day you feel mentally drained. The portions of food are tiny, it's often cold. You guys can't even interact with each other, is that right? Yeah, so we, we ring each other at mealtimes, uh, but in terms of physical interaction, like, no. Um, like, I mean, we... And like like the guys can see each other from their balcony kind of um but like that is literally it um and yeah so it is it is draining because you spend every day hoping that next week is going to be the week and then currently it never is it's indefinite and your test is today right monday's the day you get the test so all three yeah. of you get led down you do you, do you have a test in the room where do they do it literally right here behind me like I sit in this chair and I get swab tested, yeah. So you don't even leave the room for the test and then you, basically your entire future for another week depends on whether you're still testing positive. Exactly that. Well, look, it's... Yes, the Aha. swab, isn't it? At the best of times. I just wonder, are, are you being antibody tested as well? No. no. So, so I requested uh, for when that was possible because once they told us we weren't infectious, know whether that was something that we could do um, and we were essentially told that because the antibody test is less accurate as a reading that we could have it but we it wouldn't be good enough reason even if we it did show antibody to let us out well look keep your spirits up guys um it, it's a very it's a kind of kafkaesque situation isn't it you know you don't have uh, the infectious mm. virus anymore and yet the infectious virus or the fragments of it keep showing up on the test. It's enormously frustrating. Fingers most, most crossed. Most worrying, I think at least two of you need haircuts, and I think you know the two I'm talking about. <laughs> so we're now reaching a very serious stage of the lockdown, <laughs> aren't we, lads? Oh, it is. It's a reminder of what we all went through back in, in March, with you all confined to your rooms and only being able to see the view. Well, I think it's, it's very tough, very FaceTime. tough uh, for you guys. And it's the uncertainty of not knowing how many weeks you may be. You've got someone on the balcony underneath you, you've been there three months. For young lads like this, trapped in a foreign country for months on end without any real certainty is very difficult. Yeah. So we wish you all the very best, chaps. Sorry you're going Let through Let us know about the results. On a positive note, if you want some news from back home, Arsenal are unbeaten. They've won two out of two. Uh, looks like we're going to win the Premier League. So yeah. there you are. That's like to point you out, up. Crystal Palace also unbeaten. <laughs> um, don't know who any of you support, but there we go. There's the good news from our perspective. <laughs> what was that, Will? I'm a West Ham fan, so it's oh, well, Arsenal... Yeah. We Not for me. He just stuffed that, you out of sight that at the was weekend. Bad news so for you, then. That should add to your misery. Mm -hmm. uh, guys, thank you very much indeed. We appreciate it and best of luck to you. <laughs> thank you. Good luck. Very thank weird you. limbo to very be in. Very strange situation mm. to, to just be constantly. And also, I just think to have somebody around you who's been there three months. Imagine being a 22 year old stuck in a one room. You're thinking today is the prison. day. It is like a prison. Yeah. In fact, in a prison, you get out more. Wouldn't you? You'd have your, you'd have your recreation. It's weird. They can't even get out of the room. Really tough for them.